NNFC has an EVG double-sided mask liner. First, we pick a cantilever mask prefabricated especially for INUP from our mask library. The mask consists of transparent and opaque parts that define a desired pattern. When we place this mask over the resist coated sample and expose to UV light, cross-link bonds in the resist are broken. We first load the samples onto the mask liner tray. Then we place the mask on the wafer. Now the assembly is ready for ultraviolet exposure. UV light exposure is done at predefined energy levels specified in millijoules per centimeter square. After UV exposure, we must develop the pattern on the sample's photoresist. For this, a specified developing solution is taken in a petri dish. The next stage of cantilever fabrication takes place in the dry etch bay. Here we employ the ICP RIE fluorine chemistry tool to etch the exposed device layer. These are our samples from photolithography. First we apply formalin oil on a large carrier wafer to prepare a sticky base for the samples. Next, we place the samples on the carrier wafer. We now load the samples into the RIE station load lock chamber. Let's understand the ongoing process better. In supercritical dryer equipment, the IPA is replaced by liquid carbon dioxide. Once critical point conditions are created in the chamber, the distinction between liquid and gaseous phases is lost. As liquid carbon dioxide turns gaseous, the beams are released with minimal stress. The equipment has two probes to apply the voltage, a display screen and specialized software to analyze vibration data. After placing the sample on the vibrometer, we position the probes to make contact with the cantilever's handle and the beam anchor in the device layer. Then we apply a specified voltage and observe the frequency response of the vibrating cantilever beams. The vibrometer picks up resonant frequencies of the fabricated cantilevers and displays corresponding velocity peaks. This confirms that our team has successfully created functional cantilevers. The vibrometer software also allows identification of vibration modes such as first and second by synthesizing a 3D animation from data taken along a user-defined path.